we still got the shirt key to disintegrate since that seems to be a favorite of hers. Most definitely. Okay, um, then it is uh, Flynn's turn. Um, kind of want to wait because I don't want to leave Abigail's circle, so I'm going to wait. Okay. Oh, I'll cast, um, I'm going to cast Bear's Endurance on, on myself. Okay, it's probably a good idea. Just keep in mind when the when the spell ends, you lose those hit points. Yep. Owl's wisdom in your case might be a better choice. Owl's wisdom. Owl's wisdom. What? Owl's. You said owl's wisdom might be better in our, my choice. In my yeah, because your will save is your worst save. Yeah, that's true. I was using it more for HP than anything. No, that's fine. You can do it however you want. And that's it for me. All right, Paul, Akasha, you both get 46 hit points back. Did you roll for Abigail? For what, her save? Yeah. Yeah, she got 53. I wrote Abigail. Yeah, no, I just... She doesn't look like she has any wounds. and you didn't Oh, she just... still takes half? Yeah, oh yeah, you take half if you make the save. He just healed her for more than she took. Oh, okay. Yeah, he did. Sorry, I thought she took a lot more than that. Wow, he does a crap ton of healing. Yeah, why can't you do that much healing? Helps when you roll three sixes in there. And only one. One. Okay, you doing anything else, Odo? No, that's it. I assume Dex is not doing anything? Uh, nope. So we are on to Akasha. Um, well, Akasha will activate her Psychic Meditation to gain temporary hit points. And then we are going to ready an action to basically teleport um, to the position of the Lady of Pain. Once she is within uh, the aura for Abigail, and I guess she's going to reallocate some of her Essentia to defensive allocation. Um, although, actually, since we've been waiting so long, it's been at least a minute since we um, have been sitting here ready for Chalva, right? Yes, it had been uh, probably about an hour. Yeah, so Akasha actually has all her soul melts to full then, thanks to the rod. So then that's it. Okay, I don't know why I skits out there in the middle of Chelva's turn, but all she did was take her standard action, so I'm just going to grab the rest of her abilities. Apparently, I didn't put the mask powers on her character sheet.
Okay, so she will, as her free action, um, maze Akasha. All right, Akasha does have SR for whatever it matters. 17, I believe. Okay, and then she needs to make, what, a will save? Yep, DC 41 will save. Right. Um, is maze a mind affecting effect? I, don't know uh, I think it's a teleport effect. Yeah, it's a conjuration teleport. Okay, never mind then. But yeah, so she saves. Oh wow, that's a potent save. So as her swift action, she will move up to there. She teleports, sorry. And she will wait there. That doesn't change Flynn's action or Odo's action or Dex. So it's just Akasha that I fucked up. I think she would still not leave the aura, like uh, Abigail's aura, so she'll ready to attack Lady Ping when she can. The yellow aura is Abigail's aura. Oh, excuse me, the larger yellow aura. Well, uh, the green one is her protection aura. It gives you protection against low-level spells and the... Uh, doesn't stack with your bonuses you already have, but it's the greater circle against evil. I see. Okay, well then I guess Akasha will go in, try to get some damage done. So she will teleport in. Um, I guess she's close enough that she could do two teleports this turn. Um, and with Snap Kick that she picked up, she makes a total of four attacks. And then takes minus four on all these attacks. Flynn would have uh, teleported, or had Jackson teleport them in after Akasha, if she was moving there. Oh, wow. Don't apply your damage yet. So you made how many attacks? So these are four attacks. All these would be at minus four, which unfortunately means the 48 would miss. I don't have the minus four applied here. but Okay, uh, she will, I assume, parry all of those, yep. Okay. So now we know she's parrying into this. Can I teleport in and do my attack to Yep. Are you doing anything else, Kasha? No, that would have been all of her actions then. If I get three attacks per weapon, I just get one, two weapon swings here, my main hand and offhand? Yeah. Uh, that's plus 14, so it would be 40? It's messed. Starting off strong. That's it. All 
Okay, um, then we are on to the Sentinels. Uh, they will just move up. I think they're. I think they just move at normal foot speed. Yeah, they just move at 30. And that is their action. And then the uh, Dabis will probably cast a spell of some sort. He will cast Hold Person Mass. I just have to look up the area on that. No more than 30 feet apart. So that would just be um, Flynn and uh, Akasha. Hey, I'll be right back. My son just dropped something in here. All I hear is a scream, oh no, and a bunch of little sounds. You broke something. Good luck. Yeah, I got to go investigate. I'll be right back. What save do I need to roll? You're not in the area. All right. 31. Uh, 31 is a save. Davis' save versus enchantment is 27. I I'm assuming Dax will have to make a save too, right? No, it's hold person. Yeah, unfortunately, I was actually looking at Hold Monster. I think I took Hold Monster as one of the spells. I just, uh, the mass allows me to affect more people. So if Akasha succeeds on this save, um, and this is not including Abigail's bonus, right? So. Yes, you do not get her bonus against anything but Chalva. Okay. So then she gets to reflect mind affecting effects back to the caster at the same DC. Ouch. How do you do that? That's um, using her class ability from uh, two level ups ago, actually. It's the first time it's come into play. Oh. It is prepared mind. So this is can attempt to turn mind affecting effects that specifically target her against the originator when she makes a successful saving throw to resist their effect. Effect in area spells are not affected. The effect uses its original DC and other attributes. Yeah. So I assume. So would mass be considered an area, though? Here's the full text. Oh, wait. Um, it's. I mean, it doesn't really say it's area, it just says it affects multiple people. So I put the text in the Discord. I think in this case, like, map uh, area would be like a firewall or something. Yeah, but it's mind-affecting effects, which don't have areas like fireball. Yeah, I'm not going to waste a bunch of time adjudicating it. I will just allow it because I, I don't want to go. I don't know what the answer is, and I don't want to waste time looking it up. And I think the answer is going to end up being it works, so I'll allow it to work. Okay, we can double check later. Everywhere I'm looking up, people agree that mass and AOE are two different things. Yeah, that, like I said, I think that's going to be the outcome. Um. So I'm going to go with that. And it specifically, it doesn't say a 30 foot radius. It says people within a 60, within 60 feet of each other. Or 30 feet or whatever it was. Same with uh, horrid wilting. No two creatures can be more than uh, 60 feet apart. I think that just allows you to pick the targets in the area of effect. 
which would mean that it's not an area of effect. Okay, so the Dabus, unfortunately, is held. And I don't think he has spell resistance. I just was thinking about that. I was like, oh, does he have something that gives him spell resistance? But he doesn't. Well, that's terrible. I guess technically Akasha is SR, so... Okay, well, I'll roll against her SR. I think his bonus is greater than her SR, though. Right, hers is just 17 right now. Yeah, he's 15 and he's plus 3 or 5 against enchantment. Yeah, plus 5. Okay, so he gets stunned by his own effect, or held by his own effect. That is something the uh, Lady of Pain would have known, but the DM did not. Okay, so then we're on to Abigail, who will immediately charge Chalva. Oops, I didn't fix that. Uh, the first one would be the attack, and it would be at minus two anyway. So she takes 48 points from the attack of opportunity as she charges up. Actually, she doesn't have to get within range now, because she also has the same reach. So never mind. I just realized, even with everything, she's got a crit fish to hit her. Really? Oh, wait, I didn't take into account her plus 14. Yeah, I was going to say, the uh, plus 14 is a major factor. Imagine having a crayfish to kill your arch enemy. There we go. Two hits. That would be terrible if you just added that plus 14 to your already existing rolls. <laughs> Where most of them would have hit. Where most of them would have missed. Oh, right. Oh, no, they would have, yeah. The 35s would have been uh, 49. And 36 would have been at 50. Oh, wait, three hits. Blanking. Oh, nice. But I don't get past the cold. Oh, you have to do the aura? Her damage reduction? The damage reduction is chaos. And you do get past it because you have a plus three weapon. Oh, that plus three weapon is going to come in clutch. Um, so everyone has to make the fortitude save versus disintegrate, but I think you guys are all immune to fire and cold via uh, Kessia. Yep. So Dex and uh, what's-his-face can roll their save. Dex and who? Flynn, you didn't bring uh, Slevin in with you? Or uh, Yaxon? No, I didn't bring Yaxon. He hasn't even gone in the turn rubber yet. Uh, what's the save? Uh, the save against the shadow is 41. What is it? A fort, uh, reflex or fort? It's fort for the disintegrate. Huh. Wow. 
remember when I had a dog. How much damage does it do? Uh, 50 points, I believe. Totals there are the save, save damage. Now, if he's in the middle of his blink, does he still take damage from that? Um, I think he gets a 50-50 on uh, damage. Although, if he remains in the area, he keeps taking it until he... Uh, or he keeps dealing with it until he takes it. So, in this case, I don't think it would matter. If it was a fireball, he'd have a 50-50. But while he's in the shadow, if he appears in that period of time, he will take the damage. Fair. Okay, I think I fixed uh, Chalva's macro. So she used four attacks of opportunity on Akasha and one on Abigail. So she's good at the moment. Uh, they're both right at the same distance. Oh yeah, we didn't end up doing that. Okay, so she didn't do it. It's just a lot of her abilities are based on her reactions, which is why I haven't used them up until this point. But if we're going for death... Um, now is the time um when abigail moves up to attack the lady of pain um she can sense her evil intent uh, the reason i asked about yaxon is i assumed he would be on dex with you so he would have teleported when dex teleported uh, i thought you agreed that I thought we went over that he only I could be on the dog when he teleported. Oh yeah, yeah. You can only take his rider. You're right. Yeah. Um, is it when they come into the shadow that they uh, take the damage? Yes. Okay, well, Yaxon will fly... Um, if Abigail's done, Yaxon will fly up here somewhere and breathe fire, breathe his sleep on these guys. Can he reach both of them? Uh, I mean, if he catches it at the tail end. What's the area? I have to enlarge it, but it is... Uh, it's a 30 foot cone you should be able to. I believe the mouth of a 30 foot cone is also 30 feet. Yeah, it is 30 feet, so. Okay, that's not the enlarged version? Nope. Okay, well, I'll roll a will save for each of them. Neither of them are particularly good at it. Huh. 26 a save? Uh, yeah, 26 is a save. Um... Okay, one of them saves, one of them fails. He is asleep for 12 rounds. What a nice roll to get my breath back. Uh, that's it for you. Yeah, it'd be awesome if you could use it again on the nobody that's left. The one that isn't, you know. Can he be affected by the breath weapon again? It doesn't say he can't be. Okay, I just wanted to check. Okay, I went to roll Cassius' uh, initiative like three times and kept forgetting and then realized at the end of the round that she wasn't in the list. But we'll do Paw first and then move on to her. A Paw can't do anything. So Paw holds his actions. Okay. Then we're back to initiative. What was
was, uh, you're not doing anything with Naomi, right? Oh, sorry. She engages the Sentinel. I'm just going to have her fight the remaining Sentinel. I just need to hit Chava so we can actually deny her spellcasting. Like, come on. Oh, you took a special ability? Yeah, that Mage Bane special rogue talent. How does that work? Uh, it just carries over the um, the need to co the concentration or whatever till the, till the beginning of my next turn. Oh, nice. Yeah, what is it? It's Mage Bane Strike. So essentially, as long as I hit, it's it, it extends around to the, how long they need to uh, for their spell casting. Okay. Figured it'd be nice because she always goes before us. That is true. Okay, so on her turn, uh, you guys can roll your, I guess it's just uh, Flynn and what's-his-face, Dex, who can oh. roll the uh, aura. Don't I have the immunity as well? Because I was with... The immunity is an Akasha ability. Oh, it's an Akasha ability? Okay. Sorry, yeah. Also, doesn't Akasha go first? This round? Oh, sorry, I didn't sort the initiative. Yeah. Okay, Akasha goes first. Okay, so should we do, so we could do three teleports for six attacks, or we can do a full round attack for, was that four attacks or five attacks? I think it's five, no, it would be five attacks if I choose to do that extra one. So... I think she'll do the full run with five attacks. Each of these will be minus two. Interesting. Basically just trying to suck up her AOOs, give maybe Flynn or somebody else a chance to get through. Since she's Did Flynn there. damage her last round? Nope. Okay. Roll back to back four. Nice. Okay, uh, so she will attempt... That's five, so she will do the first four. Which it looks like they are all successful. 47 is not, so the... Um, oh, shit. Okay. One, two, three, four. Yeah. I got to get minus two, so yeah. So. Okay, yeah. so she blocks the first four. Okay, and then the fifth attack, it looks like, would get through... For the fifth, damage. No, the fifth attack she blocks as well. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Just check. All right. So I meant to make a parrying macro and I totally forgot. That's okay. Hopefully that used up her stuff. I, it just occurred to me that she can do. Um, she still has a swift after her full round, so she can also do a quick teleport. We'll say she will go to um, here. And then do two more, but then these will be at a total of minus four for these next two attacks. Okay. Please, please finish off in the flank. I don't think she can. Well, I mean, I could teleport less. Sorry, wait a minute. So let's say she, she was right here, right? So she could just teleport five feet. If I don't feet. sneak attack, I don't do damage. Okay. Well, let's say she just teleports five feet so you can keep the flank. Okay, if you teleport to there, she will use one of her reactions to block your teleport. Okay. How's that work? Uh, you go, you don't move, and you take two points of damage uh, when you hit a barrier in your um, astral conduit. Okay. Alright. So she just stops the teleport. That is a force attack. Okay. 
So that would be six of her attacks so far. Okay. Well, that's something. Yep. Then that's her caution. Okay. Uh, then it is Jalva's turn, and everyone can roll, or Dex and Flynn can roll their saves. Uh, that's Dex's roll. Does that make it? Um, not if that's the total. That is the total. Okay, well, he'll take 34 points of damage. Flynn makes it and takes no damage with a natural 20. And then she will five foot to the north. And kill Abigail. One bright side. She has a hard on for killing Abigail. So Abigail takes a shit ton of damage. Why is Abigail's but she gets a plus fourteen AC as well, right? Uh yes she does. But her AC isn't particularly high. Although I guess 47 is now high enough that it blocks the first one. Okay, um, and then she will hit um, Flynn with the maze. So you can roll your save. Uh, I'm using my half level. Here. Okay. Did she overcome the DR or no? DR on. There we go. She's got DR15 evil. She does not overcome her um, DR. Um, does a 47 pass? A 47 does in fact pass. Oh. Don't will save the rock. And then she will roll her the rest of her attack. Ooh, there's some juicy damage. That was all on Abigail? Uh, yes. I have two attacks from that cycle on this. Yeah, a couple extra points from the armor did actually make a, a difference. Yeah, but that one round took her from two, 247 down to 79. It's a good thing almost everybody in this party is a healer. Okay, that is, she's taken her free action, her swift action. No, she didn't take a swift action. She five-footed. Yeah, but she can do that as a free action. If she doesn't take any other move actions. And she, did she take damage from you, Akasha? No, she parried all the attacks. Oh yeah, she gets her regeneration on her turn. Where did she take damage from, by the way? Was it from Abigail, or...? She took damage at some point. She's got damage on her token. Abigail did some damage to her. Okay. Oh, that's brutal. Ring of blades. Done.
So everyone within five feet takes d6 plus 10 of uh, is it force damage. Is there a save? Nope, you just eat it. It is conjuration. Um, but it is just night, so it would be slashing damage. Actually, Dex is DR on that. Yeah, you would get your DR on it. What's the uh, damage? Uh, hang on, I'll roll it. Sixteen points. Well, Dex isn't dead, but... but he's now standing in the shadow with no hit points. Yeah, so he's pretty much dead next. Um, do you want me to roll a reflex for when I or, uh, acrobatics for when I fall off? Uh yeah, you can roll an acrobatics for the fall or a ride check to tumble down. Let's do that. Thirty-five. Yep, no problem. I think it's like a DC 15 check. Okay, uh, then it's your go, Flynn. Well, in rage, by the way, he's going to, for the best, cast his Swift Hunter's Eye, which gives him another 3d6 on his sneak attack, on each sneak attack, and start attacking. So three tender. Ooh. I thought not a confirmed crit, so I'm gonna re-roll that with my with my tender blue. Uh confirm the crit with the crit. And then next two hits. All these are plus 14, by the way. I don't have the macro. I don't have it in my macro. That's fine. Do the math. That one hits. So three. I was hoping that the maze would get rid of you, but she probably should have teleported out of the flank. But she can only do one or the other. So, Kender... I have a plus two weapon. I don't think that hits through it, right? Yeah, it does. Oh, okay, sweet. Plus two overcomes um, alignment DR, which is all she has. So she does. I'm just rolling for sneak attack for the crit. First attack does 78 points of damage. Second attack does 18 plus 39. 57. And three attacks with my offhand. That'd be a hit with the bonus and flank. Crit not confirmed. Crit. I think that actually might be a crit confirm. Just brings me up to 48, so... Does she take Thunder in there? Electric hit? Uh, she does not take the... Oh, maybe she does. Hang on a sec. Yes, she takes the electrical damage. Okay. Yeah, she takes energy damage as long as she's within uh, Abigail's aura. Okay. So the first uh, first hit, so it's another f the crit, which would be
Nonetheless. Oh, I totally forgot to take into account all the extra sneak attack damage I did for my spell. Okay, just add it up. Um, I hit... You only get six attacks. Did you hit with all of them? I missed with one. So you get five times your bonus damage. So if I had to get an extra 3d6 per attack, that would be three times 15d6. Ouch. Um, and after that note, I don't think she's casting spells again. So, yeah. That's Other it for Flynn. She generally goes first. Well, no, I've, uh, I've got the thing that carries over my damage. The only thing that really matters is the highest damage you did, which was like 78. Yeah. 78 points of damage from a single hit will be very hard for her to make because her spellcraft's only 53. So you get for killing my dog. Yeah, I think she needs a 20 to do that. Dex is still under the ground here. I just haven't. I just moved him out of the circle. Yep. Oh, is he Wait, dust next round then? Yeah, he's dust next round. Okay, then we will move on to Odo. did a lot of damage there. Yes, you did. I think I'm fucked next turn. Well, since you've nerfed her ability to cast spells, um, the only thing she can do is attack. And she gets eight attacks around that do 400 points of damage. She just cast a big old healing spell. All right, Flynn, you get half that in temporary points, and Dex gets full that. He might be able to blink out in time. Or not blink out. Dimension door. And you gain 23 temp points. Is Dimension Door a spell-like ability? It's... Yeah, he gets Dimension Door and Teleport. Yes, but are they spell-like abilities? Oh. Uh, screw Day is free. It doesn't say if it's a spell-like. It just says Blink Dog Teleport as Dimension Door cast for each full hit dice once per day per hit dice as a free action. Okay, as long as it doesn't say spell-like ability. Because um, spell-like abilities, you need to roll Concentration. Oh, it's a free action. Well, the action doesn't really matter, but the not action right. is what probably makes it not a spell-like ability because doing it as a free action would make it a eighth-level spell. Which means it's more of an innate ability. Yeah, I think that's... That comes with the I just wanted to confirm. I didn't know if they had changed the wording of it. Okay, are you done, Odo? done okay well kessia will continue to engage the sentinel and the sentinel will turn on her the davis gets his save which i think i rolled in there somewhere yeah i rolled a 19 which is not um good enough so he remains held so then we move on to Yaxon. Um, does uh does his breath come off this round if we only 
uh, the number of have. rounds that it takes to regenerate, or the number of rounds you cannot use it. Okay, so we can't use it this round. He'll just. Uh... Can't really smite Chava, can he? She's not sure. evil. No, he's just gonna. He'll just like fight the Sentinel with the uh, Cassia. There. That's it. Do you want me to roll for his thing, or are we just gonna do theater of mind for the Sentinels? Ah, uh, yeah, we'll just do theater of mind for the Sentinels. I know. I just wanted something going on in the background that they could be dealing with if she wants to if he wants to help her that's fine he can't hit chava he learned that last time so i think in the case of the sentinels in a ranged fight they're pretty evenly matched with kessia he'll do like flyby attacks and whatnot just to annoy them pretty much so i think his plan yeah i think kessia has a fairly wicked uh armor class so even a plus 32 is not a tremendous advantage, although they get more attacks than she does. Okay, um, then we're on to Paul. Cast haste. Interesting choice. Who are you hasting? I should be able to get all of us. It's only like a 15-foot radius. It says it's one creature, no two of which can be more than 30 feet apart. Yeah, which is a 15-foot radius. Oh, okay, so... Can't he do that? Oh, well, we're 20 feet apart, so we can't hit it there. No, there, you have to be... Th it's 30 feet apart. So he can get the two of you, or he can get Akasha and Abigail and uh, Kessia. Point in space. Sorry, what was that? You pick a point in space, right? And then you go 30, 30 feet. feet. No, it's no two can be more than 30 feet apart, which is effectively a 15-foot radius circle. If two people aren't 30 feet apart, they're inside a circle. So you could definitely get Akasha and Flynn, or you can get Akasha, Abigail, and Kessia. But I don't think you can get um, Abigail and uh, Flynn. Oh, maybe you can. It's really just Odo you can't get. Yeah, yeah. then I'll leave Odo it. Yeah, if you basically center it on the northeast part of uh, Chavo, you can get all of them. Are you doing anything else? Uh, Faith Miner. Who are you healing? Myself. I'm the only one of my faith. Well, I guess other than what's her name, but she's not a but That's fair. Um, Abigail is uh, seconds away from being dead. I didn't know that when the round started, so... No, that's fair. Okay, what's Dex doing? Uh, he's he's just going to uh, Dimension Door out. <laughs> Tell him to leave me so I can fight. Okay. Then it is Abigail's turn. Um, she has, uh, become aware that the Lady of Pain is evil now, so she can use her smite. Oh, because that would have changed the Axon's. The well, Axon's not aware of it. The Axon's fair. Well, hopefully. Abigail tells him. Well, you might notice when she smites her that, uh, she's smiting her. That is a shit ton of damage. Especially with a smite. 
that's how that's really strong. Holy God. And she confirms the crit. You got okay. the extra attack, right? What? Yeah, she gets an extra attack with her greatsword for haste. Why was I worried about fighting this? Negative 16. Okay. Uh, when she strikes um, Chavo down, she kind of falls to one knee and the uh, mask falls to the ground. And uh, what's her face? Abigail can roll a save. Chalva has a uh, scarred face. Looks like she's been through uh, eons of battles and <laughs> conflict. Uh, she's also looks very old, like not decrepitly old, but very leathery skinned. Which one? Which one? What? You said roll a save. save. Oh, sorry. Roll a will save. Ouch. That's her total. Yeah. Okay, um, as uh, Abigail's uh, hovering over Chalva, who is uh, basically uh, helpless on the ground, she uh, hesitates for a moment, and in that moment, Chalva dives at her, and she can roll another save, a uh, fortitude save. Oh, wow. She actually made the save. Okay, then she can make another will save. Um, uh, anyone uh, with religion can roll a religion check. Oh my god. That is terrible. She make the save. Joe, you gotta have a reroll code somewhere. Come on. I use quite a bit already. Religion check 32. I think we'll use a reroll code for Joe. I don't think she wants to fail this will save. Okay. Who's coughing up the reroll code? Sorry, I was trying to look for it. Oh, you just have to tell me. I can go and look it up on the list. Sure. I don't Here. think I have it. No, it's just Lake and Joe who have a shit ton of codes. <laughs> I use my codes pretty sparingly, pretty often. Mainly because you always forget about your sword. Yeah, I I remember the sword this time, and I confirmed a crit, confirmed a crit with a crit. Yeah, that's a excellent use of a reroll. Okay, um, is Pa the only one with religion? Unless I can roll planner check. Yeah, uh, I'll roll one. Okay, um, Pa, you realize that, um, the way for, um, Chalva to, uh, kill, uh, Abigail is to thrust her divine essence into um, Abigail and uh, Abigail's got the same problem and she is currently struggling with the choice to kill Chavo, Chalva but in the end um, she brings her sword down and uh, slays the Lady of Pain 
and then she falls to the ground. Holy sh! We survived. Was um. Pack? Sorry, what was that? Sounds like it was a suicide pact. Well, it's not a suicide pact. Um, the reason that Java realized in the first fight the only way she could kill Abigail was to use what she had left of her divine essence to kill a god. You need to sacrifice some of your divinity to do it, which is why only gods of higher status can kill gods of lower status. Because she only had the only essence she has left is her avatar, she has to give her life to do it. But at this point, she's determined that the only way to kill Abigail, or to rid herself of Abigail, is to kill her. So she's going to do it. And Abigail, finally besting the uh, Lady of Pain, realizes the same thing Java realized the first time she dropped her, that she's a divine being, and the only way she can uh, irrevocably kill her is to... Uh, use her divine essence which is the secret of her existence is that she is a divine hybrid java no abigail oh. java is actually the goddess of uh creation in my world hey we're gods later. but um in the process of doing so um she loses her divine spark so she falls to the ground um she kind of looks like she's going into shock somebody somebody use a helix chat I will cast my highest level healing spell on her and hope that it saves her. Um, are these three other enemies gonna start coming after us since we killed their leader? I guess should we go deal with them? Um, when Chalva dies, the two sentinels will kneel, although one is asleep. Um, and I think the Dabis, uh, when his turn comes up, gets a will save against his own spell, which he fails, so he just continues to stand there. I'll even use the gloves. You go, girl. <laughs> Are they, are they just gloves of healing? I've never asked. They're just, yeah, basically they're just gloves that allow him to add a D8 to his uh, um, healing spells. Oh, okay. She gets they, 63 back. Okay, that definitely heals her. Um, Akasha, you uh, realize that the, uh, the shock she is going through is... Um, the result of her divine spark being sucked out of her body and uh, driven into uh, Chalva, who uh, just utterly uh, dissipates. Um, you can roll a planar check on that. You guys are my heroes. Can I roll a planar check? Yep. Planar ranger man. About 26. I'm going to auto go. Oh my god. Two ones and a two on four checks. Okay. Um, Flynn, you realize as she's dissipating. Um, that she is assuming her astral form. Chava is? Yes. Uh, um, 
Does someone have a dimensional anchor or something? Or is there... She's not dead. She's, is she? Um, I'm going to say that nobody has the opportunity to determine that before she shifts away. The mask is still here, though, right? Yeah, the mask is on the ground. Yeah. Did did Chava give any signs of like what she is, like what she would be mostly resembled to for race wise? Um, she looks human, uh, vaguely human. She was an old woman, um, kind of like Statue of Liberty, just old, big toga wearing bitch. So she just yeah. ran to the astral plane essentially. Uh, Abigail look any better or do we need to put the mask on her? Well, Kasha will just wait for Abigail to pick up the mask. If she doesn't, maybe she'll pick it up. Um, Abigail, um, is just kind of trembling and, uh, shaking. She kind of looks like she's, um, convulsing and she also looks like she's incredibly cold. She's got like the chills, but, um, after a few minutes, um, she regains her senses and, uh, stands up. You notice there's just like a nest of feathers underneath her. Um, she doesn't appear to uh, have suffered any specific damage, but a ton of her feathers from her uh, wings have fallen out. 